I have an idea. Let's get technical. Welcome back again, my friends, my fellow chromatic warriors. In this video, I would like to break down a technique that I've been using lately to blend. Um, all will be explained in the tutorial, but just as a foreword, this is the way that I find myself blending after absorbing all of this knowledge about many thin layers, moving in the same direction, creating wet blended base coat, etc. Um, this is kind of what all of those, all these things I've been learning, it's all sharpened into one spear tip. And I want to lay that out. This tutorial will be a little bit different. I'm not necessarily finishing anything. I'm just trying to create a smooth gradient. And normally I would do a lot more prep work to the model beforehand. I would start the surface off with maybe the airbrush or a wet blended base coat. But um, at the risk of looking bad at what I'm doing, I really wanted to lay this technique out simply by itself. So as we're moving through this, just remember that every technique is just one little tool in the old Batman utility belt. Never know when a situation will arise and you'll need that sharp propellant, but I digress. Let's get into it. Some of you may be aware of the cube of learning. Well, behold, the pad of progress. First of all, a lot of us are aware that we need to add water to our paint, dilute it down so we can sweep it into our blends. You see I'm getting this accumulation at the, at the end of every brush stroke, a little puddle of paint. And as there's less and less paint on my brush, it gets more controllable. You can see that hard line at the base gets more and more faint. That is layering in a nutshell. Check back in the beginner section on this Patreon. You can see the video on layering. And we know what that looks like on our figure. Always moving in the same direction. He's sweeping upwards in this case. And I'm laying paint down and kind of picking up what I'm putting down as I work. But lately what I find myself doing is just taking an undiluted amount of paint on the tip of my brush and through the size and capillary action I'm able to blend without diluting things at all. You can see the amount of paint on the end of my brush, not too much. Just kind of place it in the upper area, work down a little bit. It's, it's kind of a tug of war. You're placing and pulling sort of spreading this paint out to create the thin filter. But the same thing is happening where I'm able to kind of pick up a bit of what I'm putting down because of that capillary action on the brush. And also the key to this is not having too much moisture on the brush. You see it's just sort of making things slick opposed to adding droplets of liquid to the surface. So it's very important touch your brush to the paper towel, suck the water out of it, whatever you have to do, you want it damp but still absorbent. That will give you the control. So again, we'll go back for our second pass, sweeping it in place. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're still laying down layers and layers of diluted pigments. You know, I'm, I'm spreading it out so some areas are buoyant, are so some areas are bound to stretch a little thinner than others but the accumulation of these many layers is how we create our blends so going back for a third pass now i'm starting to get things established a bit I'm probably in danger of overworking this area because i'm just working on a single piece of the model Allow me to hit this with a hair dryer. Okay, reeled back into safety. No need to rush. I should take my own advice. So again, small amount of paint on the tip of the brush. Start by sort of placing it up high. See the angle that it's coming down at. This is, you know, think of it more like a broom or a brush that you're sweeping with. 
not like a pencil you're not going at a 90 degree angle sweep up a bit of what you're laying down now that I'm getting a highlight area established I can also move into the shadows I'll take some of that base coat green a bit of the black and this should show you kind of what I'm working with you know just about how far down the brush that paint is going you can already see it happening that that softer edge developing and this is a nice exposed area so if I just gently sweep it across like so again no dilution just a just a moist brush let's go back and add another touch of that green it goes pretty quickly I'll have to let that uh, sit and dry let's jump back to the shadow tone now I can move at an acceptable rate of speed people always ask me how will you paint so fast I can't sit still and now we'll go back for another pass uh, I think this is number five I'm not keeping a hard count I just wanted to kind of separate the layers to show you what one single pass looks like but there's no need to count all you're going for is an acceptable view from your own eyes so just keep adding paint until you're happy but do be gradual go back to the shadow side of things see the advantage of using a, a larger brush and maybe if uh, things look a little murky along the blend, I can always grab just a small amount of that base coat, throw it right in the middle, just kind of, you know, using the side of that brush, that capillary action, I'm able to blend over that little gradient there. Let's also move a step higher. One more pass to this brighter green highlight. Post hair dryer, we'll go ahead and of course just one simple pass to smooth out that gradient with the green is not going to be enough. It's just kind of layering things back and forth, enveloping the, the blends and the gradients. Go a little higher here. Okay, one more level up. This green, the paint, the consistency from P3 tends to be a little silky, a little thinner, so Personally, I'm on the hunt for heavier bodied paints because it, it's much more well suited for this style of blending. However, a lot of the artistic thick body paints I'm finding are very glossy, so the hunt is on. All right, we'll just bring another shadow into play. Start highlighting this green area a little bit. Take some green and yellow just make a little bit brighter more vibrant green take some of that off on my thumb so I just have the smallest faintest amount so it's not about diluting it's about the amount of paint that you're laying on your brush just licking the brush turning it back into a blending nub so I can absorb some of that hard edge. And this is just one technique that I want you to spin into all of the other techniques. It's all about adapting on the fly and just having control over the paint. Chromatic domination. Back for another highlight. 
very, very small area. I want to let it breathe. We'll be seeing this shield in a future video. I have a sneaking suspicion. And here we are letting it fully dry. Just going back for one more pass. Adding a bit more of that highlight, a bit more of that green tone. But just jumping around until I'm satisfied with the result. And as I'm working along, I'd like to add that normally I start things from a wet blended base coat. So as I mentioned earlier, you want to spin this into the techniques that we already know. But I did think that there would be some value to be found in just isolating this technique and viewing it all by itself. Let's see, I'm just kind of balancing things out here, pushing and pulling maybe slightly lamenting that I didn't start this off with a wet blended base coat to just get the gradients going that much faster. I'll add a little bit of white to our green and yellow mix. Just cap it off at the very top. I'll lick that brush. Just absorb that hard edge of paint. Also on this metallic area I'll be shading it in just the same. Let's grab a dot of black paint. Start over to the side here. Do the same on the other half. You can see I can kind of lay the paint down and as I move away there's less and less. Controlling that angle, picking up some of what I laid down very quick blend. I want to do that a couple times just to make sure it goes down to absolute black. We're working these thin layers they kind of desaturate become a little less intense after they dry so I always want to go back for a few safety layers. Just like that Oof da. There it is. Not necessarily perfect, but this was a technical examination. The intention was not to finish something, but to practice and hone our skills. So my challenge to you is to practice this skill just as it's been laid out. Find a spare surface to work upon. It is going to be uncomfortable at first. Just like downhill skiing, you may fall many times. Someone might cut you off at the bottom of a pass and you might almost break your knee but you get back up on those skis and brushes and you soldier on. Continue to learn and improve. So remember, patient practice. Do it one time, that's your first attempt. Do it ten times, I hope it's nine times better than the first. Please let me know any comments, questions, and concerns below. As supporters of this Patreon, you are exactly the people that I want to be hearing from and I only want to better be able to teach you. Thank you very much. With that said, let's get out there, get our teeth wet.